Welcome to part 7 of my Python How to Program tutorial. This tutorial is brought to you because I received a bunch of comments from Gent2910. The squeaky wheel gets the oil, and since he commented, he gets what he wants. I'm going to start this off the same way I normally start off any Python programs that are going to be run on their own. I'm going to put a hash mark, and I'm going to signify the location of the Python interpreter. And my location happens to be hash exclamation mark forward slash user bin forward slash Python 3. And your location may be different to mine, but this is pretty much the default location where it should be. Now I'm going to define an if statement that basically is saying if this program's being run on its own, then execute the function named main. That's in essence what this says. Okay, so two underscores name two underscores is equal to two underscores main two underscores colon call the function main. Okay? And this is going to be the last line of code that you have. Now I have to define the function named main and you see here this has an error because there's no body to this function. If I want to get rid of that, I just type in pass. And then basically what that does is that allows me to define all my functions and then not trigger any errors on any of the ones. So if I wanted to create a whole bunch of functions, but I wanted to test them individually, I would just type pass in there as I was going through so that I didn't throw any errors. So that's sort of like a shortcut. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function and basically what I'm doing here is reviewing a bunch of things based off of things that you guys have told me you're having problems understanding and then at the same time I'm going to get into catching errors as they develop inside of your Python code. So I'm going to create a variable named var1 and I'm going to give it the default value of 1 and then I'm going to create another one called var2 and give it a default value of 1. And then I'm going to put star args. And this is basically going to allow them to send me an infinite number of variables. It's sort of like this other definition where I created two stars, k-w-a-r-g-s. This allowed a person to send an indefinite number of key valued pairs into this function. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my other tutorials because that is why you don't understand. All right, so we got that. Now I'm gonna create a print statement. Remember, I have to use the, the str function to turn var1 into a string if I wanna be able to print it out on the screen. I'm gonna use these two curly brackets here to define where I want the value that the function format is going to generate to appear. So where this is, that's where whatever this value is is going to be transported. And I could easily put these curly brackets over here, put them anywhere I want. And then what I'm going to do, because I'm working with two arguments, I'm just going to copy that and paste that out here, put two in there, and then put two inside of there. Jump down here into main, and I'm going to call doubles equal to. I'm going to call this function that I just defined up here. I'm going to pass it a bunch of values. It's only it's expecting a whole bunch of them, but if I didn't have this guy on here, it would throw an error. We're going to cover it later on. Hit run. You can see it prints out one times two is two. Da 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 da. And it doesn't throw any errors or anything, even though more arguments are passed. However, I want to be able to catch those arguments and actually use them. But first, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a list and I'm going to store the variables passed times two in said list. Let's just copy this. So now that list is going to be there, and I'll just print that to screen so that you know what that looks like. And I keep getting a lot of questions about like the variable names I use. There's nothing special about them. I'm just picking them out of the air. Now see, I'm using ARGS, not the star here. And what this is going to do is it's going to cycle through all of those arguments sent, and it's going to append them to the end of the list with the append command. And then as it says doubles, that means it's looking for a return value to assign to the variable doubles. So I'm going to do a return. What I'm going to send back is the list. If you run this, you can see 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, and then this is the list that's being printed out right here. And nothing was printed out down here because I need to create a for statement down here that's going to print those out. So for i in doubles colon and then I'm going to cycle through and print all of those values to screen. And if I do that, you could see that it does just that. That's what this does. This right here does this. 
Okay, so that's some of the things that you guys have been telling me you've been having problems with. Now I'm going to go through a couple other ones. Seems to be problems in regards to understanding how if, else, if, and, and so forth works. So I'm going to go into that. I'm going to call this how old. I'm going to put age in here as one of the variables that's accepted. See, there's an error down here, but I'm not going to type pass in because I'm not going to worry about that. If the value of this variable passed is greater than 35, I'm going to return the value your older than me. And then it's E-L-I-F, not else if. It's E-L-I-F. Age is less than. You could put an indefinite number of these. You could have 50 L-ifs if you want. It would be very unproductive. but Okay. And then you put the else statement. And yes, you could put what follows after this on the same line. Okay. So these are the return values. I'm going to come down here. Go to main. I'm going to put the, the function how old directly into this print command that's right here. If I jump up here and hit run, you're older than me. That's because 43 is greater than 35. Another thing you guys have been having trouble with are conditional expressions. So I'm going to do another one of those for you here. I'm going to create a function called animal, and this is going to get an argument that I'm going to name your animal. And basically what the conditional expression does is if one condition is true, it's going to assign one value to said variable animal preference. And if it's not true, it's going to assign another value to the variable named animal preference. Okay, and you start off as, I'm going to type in same as me. So if this condition that follows, if your animal is equal to cat, then same as me will be assigned to animal preference. This is where the else comes in and you type else and if they type anything else in then this value boo hiss this string is going to be assigned to animal preference. So that's how that works. Okay and I'm going to return animal preference. I have to jump down here obviously. Put this function again. Let's say I type, they type in dog. And you see boo hiss shows up, and if somebody types in cat, jumps up here, you can see same as me. See, same as me, same as me, your animal is equal to cat. And now I'm going to define a function that basically all it does is divide two values that are sent to it. I'm going to call it divide and stuff, and it's going to accept two arguments being x and y. And if I come down here, I go div result is equal to x divided by y. Then I'm going to print to the screen. Remember again, got to use the str function to change this integer into a string so it can be printed onto the screen. Okay, so that's going to print that out to the screen. Then down here, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to allow the user to enter the values. So I'm going to type in first val is equal to input. And then I'm actually going to copy this, type in second, second, and I'm going to make a call to divide and stuff. What I'm going to pass to it are the, remember these, whenever we use this input function here, it assigns whatever is here, this is considered a string. So we have to convert these to integers instead of what you might be used to, which is constantly changing everything into strings. Copy that, paste that, second. These are little things that cause a whole bunch of different errors. Okay, so I'm using the int function here to turn these strings into integers, sending them up here, and then I'm going to print something to the screen. Okay, so let's run. So I hit one and two. And you can see one divided by two equals 0.5. Okay, that's real nice and easy. It works great because I was nice. Let's say instead I run the command again, and this time I enter one and then I enter nothing. I got a value error. We're going to get rid of that. So we got a value error here. We could also have another problem. Let's run this again. Type 1 and this time type 0 in. Boom! You got a zero division error. Okay, there are ways to actually solve for these problems. I'm going to show you how. Basically all you need to do 
Just come in here and type try followed by a colon. You're going to jump down here and go one, two, three, four, so that that is inside of that code block that we have right there. And then we're going to come down here and type accept. And we're going to have our zero, zero division error. Okay, we're going to be able to catch that. And instead, whenever we have this error occur, we're going to say division by zero. And that's going to print that out to the screen. However, if we don't get that error, what we're going to do is type else, colon, and then we're going to proceed to do what we want to do. All right, just like that. So if we run it again, click run, jump down here, enter a number, one, zero. Division by error pops up instead of that sloppy mess that you just saw over there. And there's countless numbers of different errors. You can put multiple different accepts in here. Like, for example, type error will come up if I try to pass only one value and this is accepting or is expecting two values to be able to pass. And I can also type as E. That sloppy mess you saw that right there, if you would want to store that to a variable, if you type as E in here, it's going to store all that mess that was brought out here onto the screen. With a normal error, it's going to assign that to the variable named E. And then you could type in, for example, not enough arguments sent. And so you could catch every single other exception by just typing in except exception. Then what this guy basically does is catches everything. So I could just type. You normally would never want to do this, but I'm just showing you all the different things that are possible. You would never really want to catch all those different exceptions, but that's something just to think about. And if you would want to always have something print out the screen, no matter what happens, whether an exception is triggered or not, you would use this finally tag, but it's not often used. Like I said, I'm just showing you. Jump up here and hit run. And this time we'll just enter a value that's there. Made it, see, made it, printed out, even though there was no error triggered. So there's a whole bunch of things, you guys. I covered a whole bunch of things that you told me that you were having trouble with. And then I also went into exception handling. So if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And as you can see, whatever you guys request, that is what I cover. Till next time.